There's the Mini Moog. That's the uh, reissue. Then we've got the Mark I VP330 vocoder. Then we've got an Oberheim OB1. We've got a Profit 5 Rev.3.2, which has been upgraded to 120 memories, a MIDI. And then we've got a Profit 5 Rev.3, which has been upgraded to MIDI, but it's still only got 40 memories. And to be honest, I did a comparison of the two Profit 5s, and I think they sound pretty much exactly the same. There we have the Oberheim Expander. Then on this side, we've got Oberheim OB8, one of my favourite synths. And we're going to go through all the synths in detail. This is just a general overview. Over here, we've got a Jupiter 4, a Logan String Machine, Hammond C3, an original Mini Moog, vintage. Then we go into the kitchen. And then over here, we've got... Wurlitz Electric Piano, Fender Rhodes. This is a very nice sounding Fender Rhodes. Obviously, we've got a big selection of mics and stuff like that, but we're not doing that today. And that's the control room. Next, we have a Juno 106. The newer vocoder, VP330, but this has got MIDI and lovely sounding. Probably not quite as warm as the other one. Korg M1. Nord Electro 3, which has that fantastic Hammond sound on. I use that for gigs. This is a digital keyboard, a Roland JD800, one of the first digital keyboards. Um, had all the sliders that the analog keyboards had, but it was digital. It's a very, very usable synth, and you can change the sounds live. Then we have a Korg Trinity, which was a great synth in its day. Next, we've got a classic of the uh, 80s, a Roland D50. I've done tons of gigs with that, but it looks brand new, doesn't it? That's the benefits of a flight case. Then we've got the Poly 800, Korg. Then we've got an SH-101 and MC-202, which is basically the same synth, but uh, only works through MIDI or CV gate. Here we have a Honor Clavinet D6. Absolute brilliant keyboard. We'll be demoing that later. Then this is another digital synth, early digital synth. It's the Korg Z1. Here we have the ARP Odyssey. This is a vintage one. And here we have a Profit VS made by Sequential Circuits. This has uh, digital oscillators and analog processing. Over here, we have a Super Jupiter, which marries up to this here. That's a wonderful synth, really, really underrated. Uh, absolutely powerful. And below we have a Yamaha TX816, which is basically eight DX7s. A Yamaha 802, which is basically two DX7s. Uh, we've got a Studio Electronics SE1X, which is basically a rack-mounted Mini Moog. And then we have the Roland JP8080. And at the bottom, we have a classic Roland JB1080, which was a massive synth of the 90s. Over here, we have the Nord Rack. Below, we have... The Roland P330, which has an amazing piano sound on it. Below that, we have the classic S3000. This is a S3000 XL, but it's part of that classic 90s sampler range, 16-bit. Below that, we have the Novation Supernova, which is a wonderful analog keyboard, but it's kind of not the original analog. It's still a great keyboard. And below that, we have the Novation Bass Station, and uh, we've got a Kenton uh, Pro 4 MIDI uh, CV gate converter. That's um, not used much these days. And next we have the Steinway piano. This was made in 1908 and refurbished by Ian Gordon in 2013. And he's continued to maintain it every year. And he does a wonderful job. It was built in Germany. It's made of rosewood. The inside has been restrung. And the board has been sandblasted and resprayed. 
the outside of the piano was left as is because I didn't want to be worried every time somebody breathed on it. And I like the original look of it. It's a Model O. And it plays really well and I'll be playing that to you later. It's got a mellow sound to it rather than a really bright sound. Here we have the EMS AK Synthy, sometimes called the Putney. Uh, it was mistakenly called the VCS3 on the Dark Side of the Moon album by Pink Floyd. Um, it sounds exactly the same as the VCS3, but it's in a handy suitcase. This one was built in 1970 and is an awesome synth. It's completely programmable. You can patch anything anywhere. 